Pranayama for vitality. I think this is such an apt topic for what's happening right now in India when people are you know, gasping for uh, breath, for oxygen. I mean, it is, it, it is like really uh, heartwarming. So we wanted to bring this topic to you. How can pranayama help you, right, with, for, with vitality? It is powerful. Yoga and pranayama are very, very powerful. And that's what I wanted to bring today. Um, the top, her pinder, uh, core, uh, she is a yoga therapist and she will be joining me in one second. And we will be talking about how you can use your breath every single day. Hello, namaste, her pinder. How are you? Namaste, I'm good. How are you? Good, good. And I was just telling the viewers, you know, this is such an apt topic for what's happening in India right now. You know, it is like I cannot even watch the news. And, and I think it's so important to understand to all the viewers, you know, how yoga and pranayama can help you, help you with your immune system, help you so much. So with that, I, I want to open it up for you, of course. Tell us a little bit about yourself and then we go into the topic. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks so much for having me on. Um, and I think also talking about the COVID crisis that's happening in India. Um, mm -hmm. I have a link to different fundraisers um, linked on my bio. So if everyone could donate, support, spread awareness. Mm -hmm. um, but my name is Harpinder Mann. I'm currently based in New Orleans um, in the United States. I am Punjabi Sikh. I've been a yoga meditation teacher now for the last two and a half years mm -hmm. and been practicing myself since 2014. Um, so I'm very excited to be speaking today about pranayama for vitality. Um, and I think the place that we can start at is when we look at prana. Um, mm -hmm. So prana is this vital energetic life force uh, that's needed by our physical and our subtle layers of our body to keep us alive. Mm -hmm. um, and the way that um, yoga and um, they describe prana is this universal life force. Yes. Um, and it flows through thousands of subtle energy channels all throughout our body that are called nadis. Mm -hmm. um, and then the energy centers, as a lot of people probably know, are the chakras. Mm -hmm. um, so this energy is constantly flowing through our body and ways that we can derive, increase, maintain, and sustain our prana level mm -hmm. is through four major categories. Mm -hmm. So there's food. So are we eating food with high prana levels? Is it fresh? Mm -hmm. um, is it cooked with love? Mm -hmm. um, there's also rest. Are we sleeping? Are we getting mm -hmm. eight hours of sleep? Mm -hmm. um, and then there's also... Um, your mind state are you in a peaceful state of mind are you happy are you joyful and then the last one is that breath and that's when we're looking at the pranayama um, the most direct and immediate source of our prana is our breath so when we're able to control and um, be an observer of our breath we're able to bring in more energy a lot quicker um, so pranayama is is one way to be able to control our breath um, change the way that we're feeling change our mind state um, and it's and it's such a it's such a powerful way to affect mm -hmm. the way that we feel Mm -hmm. No, I think I think your breath is so powerful, you know, and there are countless research studies out there how breathing exercises can help you with, with pretty much anything, right? So in, in wake of what's happening in India, um, maybe we could, uh, you could talk to us a little bit about some of the pranayama breathing exercises that, that people can do, you know, at home, and that can help them kind of calm down anxiety. That's, of course, one thing. And of course, and some of the other things, right? Hmm. Um, I think before we even look at pranayama, where we can start is simple breath awareness. Mm -hmm. um, so simply starting to observe the breath. Because um, sometimes I have students and people that I work with that talk really fast and it's hard for them to catch their breath. And like that impacts the mind where then the mind is also busy and also like, oh, I can't get breath. And there's some other people that are really sad, speak very slow and quiet mm -hmm. and not a lot of air and breath is coming in. 
So mm -hmm. I think starting off with just observing the breath. So okay. tuning in and noticing where is the inhale? Mm -hmm. And then following it to the exhale. Mm -hmm. And then back to the inhale. And just starting to observe very simply in the body how the breath feels, the sensations. Um, and that's a good place to start to be, mm -hmm. you start to observe the breath. And then we move into pranayama, which is these very specific rhythms and techniques um, to manipulate the breath. Um, we can start off with things like ujjayi breath. Mm -hmm. So ujjayi breath is deeper inhales and exhales through the nose and mm -hmm. almost this constriction sound in our throat. And this mm -hmm. is something a lot of people will do during an asana practice if they're practicing mm -hmm. yoga asana. Mm -hmm. Will there go, and it sounds a little bit like this where it's like, and you kind of hear it as you're breathing. Yeah. And when we breathe in this way, we're able to calm down the mind, mm -hmm. uh, helping reduce worries and anxiety. We can improve our focus and our attention, removing that brain fog sometimes we get because um, there's so much happening and we're not, we're not getting oxygen. And when we're not getting oxygen, it's hard for our mind to be clear. So being very intentional with where is my breath and breathing deeply. Um, when we do things like pranayama, and I can list another two other ones, um, it's a good way to increase energy, uh, mm -hmm. to bring positivity. Mm -hmm. um, as you were saying, it, boost, it boosts the immune system, mm -hmm. um, and it rejuvenates the body and mind. So, okay, so let's just talk about, I think the, the example that you gave for Ujjayi pranayama is, is great. So uh, how many types of pranayama are there? I mean, there's like, is there, you know, yoga asanas is so many yoga asanas. So is there like a finite number as well as the type of breathing that pranayama yoga kind of specifies? That's a really good question. I don't know. I don't know how many <laughs> types of pranayama there are. I feel like I learn about a new one um, like every two weeks. So okay. I, think, I think there's a lot of different powerful pranayamas out there. Mm -hmm. um, Ujjayi being one. Um, there's also Brahmavari, which is the humming bee breath. Mm -hmm. um, so there's a Nabi Shaldana is actually my favorite, um, also <laughs> known as alternate nostril breathing. Yes. Um, so this is a good way if we're switching. Mm -hmm. Um, so we can start off with, if we wanted to practice, closing mm -hmm. off the right, and then mm -hmm. we breathe in through the left for, say, four. Mm -hmm. One, two, three, four. We close the left, open the right, exhale through the right. One, two, three, four. Inhale through the right. One, and we're not going to switch first. So we're going to stay here. And then inhaling. One, two, three, four. And then we close and then we switch and then exhaling one two three four and that's something I would recommend doing 10 rounds of mm -hmm. um, and it's a really for me I practice every morning so every morning before meditation I do alter uh, Nadi Shavana alternate nostril mm -hmm. breathing mm -hmm. so it's a really nice way to balance it to right and mm -hmm. left hemispheres into the brain mm -hmm. um, it's a good way to focus, to calm down the nervous system. Mm -hmm. um, and there's also mudras that we can do with it. So the one that I typically do is bringing middle index finger mm -hmm. in between my eyebrows. And then I switch off with my thumb and mm -hmm. then sometimes my pinky. So close. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, yeah. So that's one that I... Um, do every single morning mm -hmm. um, and something that I advise my students to do as well. So let's talk about the common ones. So, so we talked about the alternate nostril breathing. We talked about the ujjayi pranayama. Then you talked about a little bit on the humming bee. So, so let's just talk about maybe four or five total. We don't have to go through the laundry list here. This is just an introduction to how your breath can be powerful. So maybe a couple of more just to give people ideas as to what breathing exercises, how they can help them. 
Yeah. So something else, there's also um, Kappa, Kappa Balafi, um, and then Bastrika, which is also mm -hmm. known as Bellows Breath. So yes. both of these are really good pranayamas for increasing vitality because they're very mm -hmm. energizing. Mm -hmm. um, so Kapalabhati is mm -hmm. also known as um, shining skull breath. And mm -hmm. the way that we do that, it's a much more forceful exhale. Mm -hmm. So we mm -hmm. focus on the exhale through the nose mm -hmm. and then the belly contracts in. So if we mm -hmm. want to place right hand onto our stomach, when we exhale through the nose, powerful exhale through the nose, the belly contracts in. So it comes back in towards the body. And then the inhale is more passive. So I can do a few rounds to show sure. you what yes. like. Yes. So I'll just, as a way to start, always just doing a few rounds of just normal mm -hmm. breath. So just breathing normally. And on my next inhale, I'll begin. And then. Yeah, um, and then if you also want to practice, there's a rhythm to it. Yeah. Um, so I um, studied the teacher in Rishikesh last year, mm -hmm. and he was doing, he was counting, he was clapping as a count. So mm -hmm. every time he clapped is when we exhaled. So would, right. you, would you like to practice and I can clap for you? <laughs> okay, whichever yeah. one you, you like, uh, yeah. No, so so, so uh, I can do a couple of them. Yeah, sure, and we can do it together. <laughs> yeah, let's do it together. Yeah. Um, so there's a rhythm. So if you okay. want to go fast, you can. Um, okay. But I try to keep about two seconds in between. But you can go fast. That is a way to do it. But okay. we'll start by inhaling. So inhaling mm -hmm. together. Mm -hmm. And then exhaling through the nose. Good. Inhale. And we'll do two more. Good, and then inhaling, so breathing in deeply. Exhaling. And then we'll take just a moment here to yeah. observe our own breath. So observing our own breath. And when we observe our own breath, perhaps noticing where in the body we feel the breath the most. Mm -hmm. And as we start to slow down the breath, maybe we start to also feel that our mind is becoming mm -hmm. a bit more peaceful. Mm -hmm. um, I also notice that when I, my breath gets slower, the way I speak also mm -hmm. becomes a bit more calm and more peaceful. It's not as rushed. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I have a quote here. This is from Sri Sri Ravi Shankar. Mm -hmm. He's the founder of the Art of Living Foundation. Yes, yes. Um, and he explains the connection between breath and emotion. And I have it written down over here where it says, mm -hmm. our breath is linked to our emotions. Mm -hmm. For every emotion, there is a particular rhythm in the breath. So while you cannot directly harness your emotions, with the help of breath, you can do that. Say, for example, if you are in theater, Mm -hmm. And a director asks you to breathe faster when you have to show anger. Mm -hmm. If you have to show a serene, peaceful scene, mm -hmm. the director will tell you to breathe softer and slower. Mm -hmm. And the last thing he says is, if we understand the rhythm of our breath, we are able to have a say over our mind. Mm -hmm. We can win over any negative emotions like anger, jealousy, greed, mm -hmm. and we're able to smile more from our heart. Beautiful. I think it's absolutely beautiful. Yeah, your breath is very powerful. And, and what that's what we're trying to say is, is, you know, understand your breath, right? All of us have the breath as long as we are living. So and, and right now, you know, there is so much, I mean, life and death, we are all of us are watching what's happening. So understand your breath and, and, and learn pranayama. Yeah, like start teaching us. Yeah, I think understand the breath, but also love the breath like a friend because our breath keeps us alive. And mm -hmm. um, 
I, I've been saying this in a few of the classes I've been teaching where there have been yogis that have gone days, weeks without water and food, but we can only go a few minutes without our breath. Um, so yeah. how precious, how precious is our breath for keeping us living and Sometimes we forget, sometimes we're so busy on the computer, we forget to breathe, but our breath is always there. It's always a friend, it's always there to support and care for us. So for me, it's taking the few minutes a day to observe my breath and invite more prana into my body as a way to say that I am appreciative and so thankful to be alive. And because of my breath, I'm able to, to be alive and living yeah. in this way. Yes, absolutely. But thank you so much. I think amazing, amazing sessions, very thoughtful session, you know, just right session for what is happening in the world. Appreciate all the work that you're doing. I think it's, it's, it's beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me on. I really enjoyed speaking with you. Thank you. Thank you very much. And for everyone else, let us know the feedback, anything you like it and don't like it. You're welcome to tell us. We do sessions every single day either on fb or on insta so let us know with that thank you so much and everyone please practice your breath thank you bye bye, Ready. bye.